Hi, this is who again. While Richpalji is taking classes in the hall there, I just rushed to my studio to quickly shoot this lecture, edit and title it. We almost have finished the third day of the Pan India AI's Level 2 National Archery Coaches Workshop Training, Examination, and the Certification. It was three days of awesome experiences. I'm sure you'll agree to it that this is an unprecedented training program. On day one, we saw some very nice self-introductions and archery introductions by each one of the participants, you. Some of you were really fantastic. And on day two, that is yesterday, we had each one of you individually asking great questions to the one and only woman Dronacharya in the country in archery, Miss Purnima Mahato. Most of you were very, very attentive and listening to every question asked and the most valuable response by Purnimaji. All this has been shot in video format and will be used in your assessment. You also made a video presentation of the 18 different steps. Each one of you, which again was shot in video for your assessments. Purnimaji made corrections in your form below the banyan tree. Then in the afternoon session, we had discussions in tuning. Today, day three was compound day with Vishwamitra Rishpalji clearing all your doubts on compound bow selection, shooting form, bow setting, and the bow tuning. Each one of you also shot an arrow with a compound bow in the archery field and shot it in video for your own assessment. Rishpalji corrected the shooting form of most of you. On day one, I sent you a video on biomechanics. On day two, it wasn't possible to shoot any lecture as work was really packed. I couldn't shoot anything. Today, I have somehow squeezed this lecture, ran and came here from the venue so that you may prepare for your exams with the second and final set of question answers. In this lecture, on an introduction to mental training, I want you to answer five questions on psychology of archery. This is just a basic but very, very essential lecture on archery, mental training in archery in a question-answer format. Listen to this well today, all through the night, multiple times if you want to be a uh, topper and go down to the next level. Here we go. Let's start with the first question. What is the greatest secret of mental training in archery? Well, let me tell you. The greatest secret of mental training in archery, the best kept secret, the ultimate mental training in archery is not to train the mind. Never train the mind. The archer can perform wonders in archery if he or she can disconnect the mind, destroy the mind, forget the existence of the mind, obliterate the mind, just make the mind disappear from the person inside. Who can shoot better? A human with the most sophisticated mind, which is more complex than a million computers, or a robo made of just metal wires, circuitry, and chips? The shocking answer is, a robo is better, much better. Because no other stimuli other than what's programmed inside ever affects its performance. Question number two, explain why the mind needs to be reined and harnessed to our advantage. Archery is a game where a specific routine has to be executed many times to shoot an arrow into the center of the target over and over again, thousands and thousands of times. When a task has to be repeated over and over again, in a modern factory, we use a robot. That is a machine that is capable of repeating many times a predefined action 
with great precision. But can an archer perform like a robo? Hmm? Driving arrow after arrow into the X of the bull's eye? Can the best archer shoot all arrows as a Robin Hood, one arrow into the other arrow? Arrows into arrows, dart in the same point. Unfortunately, it's impossible for a human to perform like a robo. The human mind is so creative and so active with a zillion thoughts buzzing inside the head all the time that the mind becomes the mind's greatest enemy and affects every arrow. A mind can inspire. A mind can push performance limits. A mind can persevere. A mind can provoke dynamic action. But it can also hamper the performance of the archer like nothing else can. There is no need training the mind if we can find a way to make the mind just stop functioning. The tragedy is we just don't have the magic formula to make the mind disappear. So we are left with just one option, reining the mind and harnessing it to our advantage. Question number three, explain distractions in archery and what does an archer do about these distractions? The central nervous system controls the muscles of the archer. It is recognized that tasks that have been practiced many times over and over and over again and have reached a certain level of automation are executed easier and more precisely than non-routine tasks. The number of components involved in the human nervous system is unaccountable. The human nervous system is a highly complex, sophisticated and effectively integrated network. A change in the mental, emotional state of the archer is consciously or subconsciously accompanied by a change in the human behavior. The human brain is part of the central nervous system. Brain activity influences the execution of the shot. All kinds of events that are watched by the archer and also thoughts that go around in the head of the archer can distract them of the task at hand and disturb the archery routine. The mind reacts to every kind of stimuli, relevant and non-relevant, thoughts, sights, sounds, people, happenings and the opponents all act as a huge distraction to the precision performance of an archer. The state of concentration is disrupted and an archer is incapable to act like a robo. Active movement in the mind is going on by itself without conscious control using a multitude of stimuli that are stored in memory and experiences, expectations, hope, Terror of losing, pressure of peak performance, tension of a stray shot. So much is working on the mind. Let's understand there are two kinds of distractions happening in the mind. Number one, distractions from outside the mind affecting the mind. And number two, distractions from inside the mind affecting the mind. So the first job of taming the mind is to deactivate the mind and let the muscular memory of the short routine completely take over. So now we have, we need to lure the mind, tempt the mind, lead the mind, trick the mind, attract the mind to something very pivotal to existence, to something that can connect biology to psychology, something that can bridge the mind to the muscle and enhance the deactivation of the mind. Something very epicentral to life and the being. This brings us to another mind inside the muscle called biorhythm. If we sink, if we can sink with this rhythm, if we can fuse into the beats, if we can keep up 
with the bio temple then the big job of disconnecting with the primal mind and letting the secondary mind inside the muscle take over becomes possible connecting to this rhythm deactivates the mechanics of both stimuli from outside the mind and inside the mind question number 4 explain the concept of dhuvriti the indian art of dhuvriti meaning heart beat rhythm has been one of the greatest secrets of sages and saints from time immemorial understanding one's rhythm of the heart allowing the primal mind to sync with the heart muscles mind and in the end controlling both the heart beat waves rhythm as well as the mind waves rhythm is an art of the supreme if we are to win in the next olympics the aspiring olympic archers must start the medal winning spree by first reading their heart rhythm by learning to read the pulse rate the pulse rate is the heart rate timing the heart rate is the rhythm of life if one can regulate the heart rate and then sync it with the rhythm of the muscular action of the archery shot the primal mind is liberated from all the stimuli hampering it and distracting the muscle there is a flow of muscle movement through the various stages of picking the arrow knocking it to the string presetting the body drawing aiming releasing follow through and then recovering this must sync with the rhythm of the heart understood well the last of the fifth question are what are the three stages of dhuvriti well dhuvriti happens in three stages ladies and gentlemen and my coaches number 1 regulating and standardizing a shooting heart rate regularizing and standardizing a shooting heart rate two memorizing the rhythm and allowing it to take over three synchronous movement of the shot sequence dhuvriti becomes the first weapon of the olympic archer to deactivate the primal mind and let the mind of the muscle which can only create rhythm take over the shooting process this becomes the first step in robotic shooting where the mind deactivates the mind and the robo inside takes over and does all the organizational primary task of shooting arrows into the x of the target all the time into the x of the target now your archer is on the right road of right mental training well my dear level 2 coaches i've given a small introduction to using the mind in not using the mind to achieve perfect shooting in archery and yes an olympic medal in this lecture through five questions and answers to them so out of the eight questions given day before yesterday and the five questions today that is 13 questions you may get 10 questions in your exam paper there may be or may not be additional lectures tomorrow if i have time maybe i'll shoot another lecture tomorrow and include those questions also in the exam based on what is possible or on what is not possible so don't go to sleep today it's going to be the difference between failing or passing in your exam as well as being selected as the top 12 to move to the next level the level 3 national archery coaches workshop and yes further move to world archery workshops in lausanne switzerland hey coaches let me say good night and some hard work good evening good night and some real hard work in studying today god bless you all who